Uh, thanks so much. I'm looking forward to this transition as we start to look at, as you mentioned, some of the very specific examples of innovation that happening across our Air Force. Uh, looking specifically at an example brought to us here by our own innovator, Ralphie Short. Uh, Ralphie is recently transitioned over to his post uh, down at Maxwell Air Force Base in the Blue Horizons program. He recently left the third operations group at Joint Base Elmendorf uh, in Alaska with, and, and so we were joined this morning by his former commander, Colonel Matthew Pipper Bradley. And we're gonna talk about a little case study here in innovation. An example of where with just a few good ideas and a whole lot of energy, Ralphie brought Ford from the commercial sector, uh, from our very innovative companies that we have in America, a new capability to make life easier, to empower our Air Force in order uh, to do mission planning more effectively. So Ralphie and Pipper, thanks for joining us here for AFWorks. Uh, thanks for the great work that you've done in enabling innovation across our Air Force. And I'd like to begin with you, Ralphie. Tell us just a little bit about the story. Uh, what is Willow? Uh, how, did, how did this idea spark in this innovative culture that has been created across our Air Force? Yeah, thanks, sir. Um, well, Widows is a mission planning software that digitizes the mission planning process. Uh, it's a process that hasn't really been addressed since the beginning. We've changed from chalkboards in the 40s to uh, whiteboards and laminated maps uh, recently, but we haven't really moved into that next phase of innovation on the process to um, digitize and kind of get into that cloud environment. So, um, the idea is quite honestly not a new idea. It's been talked about for years. I think it's uh, was just great that we finally had an outlet through AFWorks and the SBIR process to find a company that could provide a solution in a time frame that would be uh, amenable to operators instead of years long um, waiting for you know things to kind of pan out on a big contract. So tell us, how did you tell us about the story? How did how did you find that contractor, and and what was it that that brought that idea uh, that there's there's somebody who could provide a solution? Yeah. So uh, back in May of 2019, you know, finally had it with being an MPC chief and a mission commander at Northern Edge uh, up at J Bear and doing everything the old school way, and so I started googling, you know, AFWorks and idea scale and how I could start generating an idea. So I did the old school way of, you know, just typed out the idea on idea scale and emailed all my bros to say, hey guys, go upvote this thing. Um, and then in between that and August of 2019, eventually got a little bit of steam, got plugged in with uh, Tony Perez at AFWorks and went to the Spark Collider in August of 2019 in Austin, which was the first ever Spark Collider for AFWorks. And that venue essentially provided, you know, a hundred small businesses an opportunity to hear about problems directly from the user in the DOD community. And then I had about 13 companies that were interested in to help solving this antiquated mission planning problem. So I spent about two and a half months going through those companies and got it down to two and then finally landed on brain goo, which is a, you know, a small business, um, technology lab in order to build widow. So when we think about this uh, from an innovation perspective, right? Uh, look at definitions of innovation. You know, it's, it's creative to come up with an idea, but innovation really is this idea of implementation of, of turning an idea into reality. Can you tell us a little bit as you, as you started to turn that idea into reality? So you, you went from this airman concept eventually to a technology that was out there with BrainView. Uh, tell us about that next step, that, that step of actually making this all become reality now. Yeah, so I think the, you know, the first step of that is actually having leadership that buys into this innovation culture that we're trying to 
you know, to bring to bear within the Air Force and and really do it and not just talk about innovation as a buzzword. And, you know, luckily, even though I was the chief of wing weapons and tactics up at Elmendorf um, with a busy enough job, I had, you know, Colonel Bradley and Colonel Davis and Colonel Surface there with, you know, leadership that actually believed in innovation and, you know, gave me an incredible amount of uh, responsibility with some money and a lot of rope and just kind of let me let me run with it. But the biggest piece of that was just having the top cover as well. So, you know, whenever I ran into roadblocks, you know, I could call any of them direct and they would either move them out of the way or help me figure out a, you know, a way around it. So when we talk about innovation, a lot of times, right, we have the, the antagonist that's out there, the frozen middle layer. And Pipper, uh, you are the frozen middle layer. Tell us, about, <laughs> tell us, tell us what it is, right? I mean, because because it's, it's, it's fantastic to have the ideas out there. It's really cool to go find these innovative companies, but, but sometimes it's not enough. You have to have that enabler in the middle there. Tell us a little bit about this journey from your perspective and kind of the motivation. Uh, to, to, to not be that frozen middle layer, uh, but actually to be an enabler. Right, I think it stems from, uh, I've been in for 23 years and we all watch that really smart person who shows up to the AOR and you, you get the ATO every day and you can't read it and your, your mission planning time is, is zero and you're trying to create lineup cards and they get on Excel or some other database and they create a, a great idea that lives for that time that that person's in the AOR and then they redeploy and it dies. Um, and I've watched this happen over and over again. I commanded the West Sub squadron down at Tyndall. We had a, a database created by a former uh, member of the squadron that we used to track everything for the year over 330 missiles shot every year and, and participants. And then that product starts to die. And so I've watched this happen over and over and over again and just recently on the joint staff, an innovative project that kind of fizzled out because we couldn't get funding or we couldn't get the backing of the right people. So I, I think I had had enough of that and watched what Ralphie had done and saw, and had seen the importance of it and thought, okay, we're gonna take this on. And, and Ralphie already alluded to Colonel Davis, the wing commander who had the squadron innovation funds. And those funds, you know, General Goldfein had handed out and said, be innovative, which are, which is really awesome. And then it's up to the commanders to decide, are you gonna give it to little small projects? Um, you know, we're working on how we uh, help our pilots when they eject in the winter time and it's minus 50 degrees, trying to innovate some some cold weather gear to, to help them survive. But that's, that's in the lower end of money versus going after something like this, where you go, I have to believe in it enough to then go advocate for it. And really, at our level, we did what we could at the wing, but then it's advocating to General Corcoran at the Warfare Center and, and then getting him and getting Ralphie in front of General Brown for a compact have virtual visit. Yeah, so I think I think that piece of it, and that comes, I think, too, um, by having uh, some of the, the persistence. Uh, Ralphie, what is it, you know, from your perspective, if you had a lot going on, uh, you know, a, the weapons patch, not somebody who's just sitting around looking for things to do. What was it that really drove you to, to keep pushing on on this to the point of right uh, of going to the four star and saying, let's let's make this happen? Yeah, it's a it's a great question. So I think the you know for me it, the idea was kind of born out of the frustration of just doing things of the same way we've always done it and knowing that there's a better way to do it uh, just on the other side of the the fence. So. Um, really the the reason I kept going forward I just wanted to make it better for you know the rest of the folks um, you know upcoming mission commanders and mission planning cell chiefs so they don't have to go through the same frustrations that you know everybody on this call has for years coming up uh, in the flying world and really just operations overall but um, the I, I get asked this question a lot of, well, is Widow like your company or are you like making money from this or, you know, what's your, how much stock do you have in brain goo and all this stuff. And it's like, I, you know, I have no IP to this. I have no financial anything like this is purely just trying to make things better and try and find the right avenue um, to, to keep it alive 
and until you know big big air force can kind of sign on and and uh, bring it across the finish line even more so tell us a little bit uh, where do you where do you see things going from here rafi what, what are the what are the next steps yeah so where we're at right now is um we are we're in like rapid capability building mode um so i've been able to pass around the hat you know, like colonel bradley said we've gotten in front of some of the right audience we still have some other folks to talk to um but passing the hat to get money uh, to build rapid capability because we've we've proven you know the the minimum viable product to say hey yep we're solving problems but there's a lot more that we can do in the future so we've got um, the brand new team has grown from four to 12 now uh, just based on the amount of funding and the contract that we've uh, put together so by October of this year, once we get to uh, the Neptune event in October and then the Wizent 20 Bravo for the weapons school class, like we will have almost an entirely like new set or about five to six new capabilities by that point. And um, we have also been onboarded as a foundational app in the advanced battle management system so what that brings us is another avenue to start to branch out so uh, one of the biggest things on the horizon is tying into the air operations center or the future you know air all domain operations center and all the great work that kessel run has done in this kind of software application environment and tying the aoc and that higher headquarters level down to the wing combat mpc or, or tactical level um, and we'll do that at the software level so that we're not having to uh, just keep repeating old processes. Yeah, I think, um, as you know, kind of the platform one team, being able to look at software differently across our Air Force is important. Uh, well, listen, as both of you know, we have recently taken an effort to expand the successes of AppWorks, trying to, trying to multiply uh, some of the fantastic opportunities um like you have here uh, both of you being weapon school graduates uh as we are making this transition you know and pepper i'll start with you since you were bragging about getting fly f-22 around yesterday give us give us fighter pilot debrief uh give us a, what is the, what does this look like what can afworks do going forward to make sure that this is not you know next year it's it's not one ralphie telling this story but it's hundreds of ralphies and there are there are clearly others that are out there but we are, we are on a path in AppWorks to make sure that this innovation can spread uh, and scale in ways that go across our Air Force. Uh, as, as we think about that, uh, first from the, from the leadership level, Pipper, what, what can we do to enable this? Yeah, I think there's gotta be some, uh, there's gotta be more acceptance of risk. So when, when Ralphie, every, every roadblock Ralphie has faced is the risk of putting an unclassified system onto AFNET. It's the risk of Ralphie being a, a, a contract approving officer with a contract that doesn't have as much oversight. It's the risk of people questioning him on his personal motives. You know, are you tied to the company? When we have an airman come up and say, I'm excited about something and I think it can make us more lethal, then we need to assume some risk as an organization and allow that airman to run and get behind them and get rid of the roadblocks and, and the roadblocks that are in the way with contract. And I'm not, I'm not trying to throw a spear at contracting officers or anything like that, because they do have to protect billions of dollars of Air Force investment. And I understand where they're coming from and I understand the legalities and other things, but at the same time, when it's an innovative idea, we don't have the time or or Ralphie doesn't have the energy to every time he contacts somebody, the answer is no. And then it takes a two star general to step in and say, I want this to happen for Wizent. And then things happen. And so um, that's where I think the acceptance of risk, even for failure. I mean, DARPA has a has a has a good risk model because they put money into something and it fails and they go, well, we learned. And I think the Air Force needs to have a little bit more risk acceptance on innovative products that, I mean, for every Ralphie out there, there's probably going to be somebody who has a great idea and it fails. But that's not a failure. That's just a lesson learned. 
And so I think the, the cultural risk acceptance needs to, needs to change. That's a fantastic point. Um, when we go look at kind of this micro risk aversion, we, I think, is, as you're saying, we, we eventually create a huge macro risk that we have completely slowed down our innovation. And uh, as we, we think we're being very secure, uh, what we've actually done is stopped fantastic capability. Uh, Rafi, give you the last last word. How, how can AFWorks moving forward enable you and all those other great innovators that are out there? Yeah, I think what I would say to, you know, to AFWorks first would just be to um, have a mechanism for the, the core AFWorks team or, you know, multiple of those teams to recognize when something is uh, about to just kind of explode uh, in a good way. And then having the ability to dedicate a team of professionals, maybe a, a contracting and FM, um, you know, a, a life cycle management, some some type of that expertise, at least for someone like me on the op side that doesn't have that experience. If I could have a dedicated team of folks uh, helping me through that process, then I could be a better uh you know, mission partner to my local cons and CP and, uh, you know, finance guys as well as, as they're trying to learn the same process. So, um, you know, there's been, like Colonel Bradley mentioned, a lot of roadblocks, but there's also been a lot of success as well. Uh, I mean, the, you know, the 673rd cons and, and the comptroller squadron have essentially learned and executed an SBIR phase three in weeks instead of something that normally takes months. And uh, speaking of putting things into into play in weeks, you know, when we got the call from Nellis to say, hey, can you make this live for Wizent due to COVID because there's no geographically separated units going to Nellis, the Brangu team was able to build this in four and a half weeks, get it onto AFNET on DOD platform one and accessible to anybody on AFNET. And, that was directly related and you know much thanks to dod platform one and the cso nick shalane on on making that happen because it would not have happened without them um making that possible and also the the tron team in hawaii who's uh they have built the puck board application which i'm sure folks are going to start hearing about pretty soon as well um, absolutely critical to making these things happen and i think that you know, it just proves like we always talk about teams are are really what get things done. And, you know, I I didn't do a whole lot as an individual in this process. I was just the per persistent, sometimes uh, annoying major on trying to get things done. And it was really the building the team and and having great teamwork uh, throughout the last year, which really made it happen. Well, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for waging war on this innovation battlefield. And we here at AFWRC certainly hope that we can, again, multiply these stories and continue to help that innovation, bring that capability to bear in our Air Force. Thanks so much. Take care. Thanks, Vito.